Welcome back. I'm MTG Joe. We're here with some more Throne of Eldraine deck techs uh, for some new decks for the new standard environment coming out in six days, five days, I don't know, Thursday. This upcoming Thursday. Um, so there's a lot of cool decks with the new set coming out. A lot of sets are leaving. So I've just been throwing up some quick deck techs for some brews that I've been going to be playing as soon as I can get the cards. Um, so all my deck lists I'm going to be posting on Aether Hub. Uh, it's where I write articles. Uh, you can catch everything. Just look up MTG underscore Joe and you'll be able to find everything with the ELD tag at the beginning. I'm going to be trying to put out as many deck lists as possible. I will try to do a deck tech uh, like this for each one. But in case I can't get to the videos for all, uh, it's a quicker for me to just do a brew that way. So as always, if there's any other decks you'd like to see, uh, just drop a request down below. I'm going to try to get out as many as I can right now. I do have in the works a mono red, a green slash gruel stompy list, uh, mill deck. Uh, but if there's anything else, uh, certain decks like it, uh, uh, like the Adventure Tribal, uh, food tokens matter, stuff like that. I want to play with the new set first to get a little bit of feel for the cards and limited, and then I can build out some stuff like that. And then once we start playing, I will put out some more budget decks. Uh, I know people usually ask for those. Uh, I just want to play with the new set, get a feel for the new cards. The environment's changing a lot in terms of what cards are available and what aren't, so I'll put those forth. Um, in terms of budget, this is probably a mid-budget deck, and I'm happy this archetype is still staying around, hopefully, to some extent. This is Is It Phoenix. It's usually a very popular one on the channel. People always ask about it because it's relatively cheap to build. Uh, for the full 75, my particular build has 12 rares and 13 mythics. Uh, a little high on the mythics, but you can probably skew some of those mythic numbers. It's mostly sideboard um, that you can tweak it there. So what you're trying to do with Is It Phoenix is with the namesake card, Arclight Phoenix, you want to try to put it into your graveyard and cast as many instants and sorceries, minimum three, to get it back from the graveyard. If you have multiple Phoenix in the graveyard, you can get them all back at the same time. They come in, they have haste. It's a really resilient threat that keeps coming back. So the deck itself, we got a couple cards to keep enabling it. Charter Course and Tormenting Voice both left, which uh, were two of the pr premium cards to kind of turbo Phoenix out. Um, so we still have the one drops of Opt, which got reprinted. So don't worry about the Ixalan version here. It got reprinted in the new set. We still have Shock from M20. So those are cheaper spells, cantrips that way. Goblin Electromancer is a way to reduce their spells cost. So any of our two mana spells end up costing one. Then we have Radical Idea. So Radical Idea lets us cantrip at first and then we can jumpstart it and we can discard a Phoenix from our hand uh, to get the value that way. We have Lava Coils as removal. Uh, then we have Finale of Promise. So as long as you don't have a Teferi out, again, your opponent doesn't have a Teferi. Finale is a very good card in this deck. So basically for X equals 2, so for 4 mana generally, or 3 if you have an Electromancer out, you can cast an instant. So any of these guys, any of Radical Idea, and a Sorcery. So this particular one here, the only sorceries we have are Lava Coils. So this might be something I do need to tweak after playing a couple games. Uh, before, Chart, of course, was a sorcery. Uh, well, you actually have uh, Discovery as well. So we might need to revise these numbers a little. But you can basically, off one spell and uh, Finale of Promise, get three cast triggers and then get back on Arc like Phoenix. The one thing to remember is when an opponent has a Teferi out, you can't cast spells at any speed other than sorcery. So that trumps Finale's ability to cast them because you wouldn't be able to normally cast a sorcery uh, at instant speed and your instance wouldn't cast either. Uh, but this is a really powerful tool that we're playing three of. The new card that got printed, uh, Thrill of Possibility. So this is uh, our discard outlet. So it's kind of, so it's bad when we don't have cards in hand because we don't have anything to discard to it. But if for two mana, you get to discard a card and draw two cards. Uh, so somewhat very similar to Tormenting Voice, but you can do it at instant speed. So this can bin our Phoenixes and get us going that way. Um, so we're playing four of that. I'm playing one Chandra. Uh, Chandra is just a way when we've kind of run out of ammo to minus in this deck. So we're generally not going to be playing it for its zero abilities. Um, like if it's an empty board, we could just start hitting our opponent. But it's mainly for its minus two. We can get an opt. We can basically use it to cast our additional spells as we need it. You can maybe like target finale and cast it that way, stuff like that. The way we win is in the four drop slot. Uh, we have Crackling Drakes, uh, which is just a powerful spell. 
If we're running into a lot of Teferi, I might play something else instead of Crackling Drake. Um, it's usually kind of tempo neutral. You do get to draw a card, but you're paying four mana each time. Uh, Arclight Phoenix is what kind of comes back each time, and it's really what you're building the deck around. And in my particular build, I'm playing two God Eternal Kefnets. If you don't have the Mythics here, you can play Pateramander instead, or some Sahilis. Um, I like Kefnet uh, because it is card advantage. You can also get the duplicate cast if you reveal an instant or sorcery. Our deck's full of instants and sorceries, so it can basically turn one instant or sorcery into two. So get two cast triggers for your Arclay Phoenix. Also, it's a recursive thread in the fact that if it gets killed at all, you just put it back into your library. And then two discovery dispersals. Uh, we're only playing it for the discovery half. The surveil two can put uh, phoenixes into our bin, and it's just more carded draw advantage. So this deck is fairly weak to Narsets and to fairies, uh, but other than that, it's pretty uh, like explosive in some turns. Uh, mana base wise, we got Temple of Epiphany, Steam Vents, bunch of basics. I'm trying out one Castle Embrynth. Uh, the blue castle scries for four mana, which is what I don't think we want to be on. Uh, this ability is more for the pump effect. You can turn your phoenixes into four power creatures to attack into your opponent. Sideboard-wise, as always, sideboards are still a work in progress until we see what's going to be up in the new meta. Um, so what I'm thinking-wise, for Planeswalkers, you got your Sorcerer's Spyglasses. Blue-green, sorry, uh, red-green stuff, you got Aether Gusts for tempo play. So something like a uh, Ceratops on the stack, Shifting Ceratops. Any of the big green creatures, you can tuck those away. We have Fries versus Teferis. We have a Sahili, so if your opponent brings in more creature removal post board, uh, some sort of exile, stuff like that, Sahili allows us to go wide in an alternative way. Flame Sweeps versus the aggro matchups. All our creatures have flying, so it doesn't deal any damage to us, so it's a one-sided board wipe. Uh, the Royal Scions is something interesting that may find its way into the main board. Uh, so this is Will and Kendrith uh, from the old uh, Battle Bond set. They became a Planeswalker together. Uh, so it's... Uh, plus is the looted effect so we can bin our uh, creatures it's also a three mana six loyalty planeswalker after we plus uh, it also with the effect of the plus one if we have a crackling drake out say we have like a 12 4 crackling drake we can get a plus two oh and trample and first strike which can just kill an opponent on the spot a lot of times crackling drake gets chump blocked so this is a way to get around that and then if it stays on the board long enough we can just draw some cards and deal some damage that way so it's kind of removal damage that way and then more against the control matchups heavy removal stuff if like grixis esper stuff becomes a thing Rowl's an alternative win condition with its ultimate and chandra's a way that can go against the flash decks that are uncounterable so it's pretty much the deck um we're not playing like brazen war a brazen borrower or anything like that kept it pretty traditional to its original state but that's pretty much it let me know what you think in the comments down below um, I'm going to be posting all my decks on Aether Hub. Just search up MTG underscore Joe, and then they'll all be listed there. And uh, my dog is saying hi. Uh, and as always, uh, if you are considering purchasing any cards from the new set, uh, and you're doing so on TCG Player, I do have an affiliate link in the video description down below. Uh, if you click that link, follow through, do your purchase as normal. Uh, it basically just lets them know that I sent you from the channel, and it helps out support the channel. Uh, everything we get from this is, which is little, uh, just goes to buy more cards so we can play as many decks as possible. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions for other decks, do let me know and drop a note down below. Thanks for watching. Have a great one.